Hello, Namaste, and it's good afternoon, pre evening for us. Whatever it is for you, greetings and Namaste to all of you. And we are back for our thirteenth episode of season two of Tell Me Appa, and we are going on and on and on and on, and we are enjoying these Sundays. Well, we are really enjoying it. Whether we are helping you all, but I hope it's. been something either you know laughter or whatever <laughs> whatever we could bring to all of you we are just happy to be with all of you and in this episode as i told you last week uh, we will be entering the music life the journey of dr sir and it's specified carnatic music okay so <laughs> we should stop uh, you know thinking like music it's better i mention what and it's carnatic vocal music so just to get started into it we have a lot more to learn and the recent few episodes have been quite nice because we are learning a lot of what dr sir had to do and how he went through it and lot of us have that whole journey ahead of all of us so all the best to all of you <laughs> namaste wonderful to share this time with you and thank you for logging in and being with us means a lot to have your support okay so moving on into our first question when did you become interested in the carnatic music also please share some moments in your journey of music um it is very tough to know exactly when i got interested because um i grew up in kamli swami madam the ananda ashram where the six month course would go on from october to march and we had uh, puduvai kalaimamani manikanan sir teaching the music classes and so every thursday there would be the music sessions and the students would be learning all the uh, swaras then they would be learning all the bhajans ganapati ye velva yaingarane parama pavana krishna all these specialties of ananda ashram and on sundays we would have thousands of children come to kamli swami madam and they would also have music classes going on with manikanan sir so sort of it was it was happening all the time so even as i grew up uh, it was always there it was the music was always there and swami ji uh, loved singing so in fact uh, swami ji along with all the students Uh, formed what he used to call the Anand Ashram International Bhajana Troop, and uh, what we would do is that any temple uh, event in Pondicherry and surrounding areas, the temple Kumbha Vishakams, the temple festivals would be there. So we would go and perform. So Swami Gita Nanda and his trained band of uh, white-skinned Bhajana singers. <laughs> sort of that was the novelty factor that all these white people were on stage singing tamil and sanskrit and other indian language bhajans and it really appealed to people that because people loved to have this fact that the people would be dressed very nicely swami ji always was giving emphasis and amma ji also that people should dress in the indian clothes and so you have all these beautiful ladies in indian sarees the men in dhotis and kurtas and Uh, kota pajama and uh, sitting on stage and you had the harmonium being played by parmanandam or tribu so then later on jagadish sir and the madangam uh, would be played or the tabla would be played by uh, thavamani he was our official player at those days and so you know we would be going out at least once if not twice a month and giving these concerts starting off with Gane, uh, ganapati velvai and ending with aingarane that was the formula in between you would have kakke isiraginile nandalal nandan kariyamugam like you know those type of songs would be there you then have the sariga pada sanida pada pamage isari sanida sariga gagga and all this and swami ji in between like om ah oh and especially when that 
I think when I started it, that uh, harmonium would be playing and the tabla and Swamiji is like, Om Ganapati, Om Ganesha. And that dynamic energy. So uh, as a small kid, I was part of this. So music, the bhajans were part and parcel of my whole upbringing. And so it was natural that I used to learn all these songs. And also in the puja, we have a very strong uh, Tamil culture. The Tamilian culture has Devaram, Tilvasagam, Tilpavai. And especially during the month of Margari, people would come in the early morning and they'd be singing. Margari Thingal, Madhini Vendananalam. That is the Tilpave. You would have Tilvan Pave. Chotune Vedian Jodi Vanavan. All these beautiful songs from uh, the, uh, you know, Nayanmas and the Tamil culture, the Alvas, the Nayanmas. So this was part of it. And so we had also Narayana Swami, who was our Oduva, who would sing all the different Tevaram, Tilvashagam, and the Siva Puranam. Namasiva Yavargam. And then Swamiji will Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Shivaya Namah, Namah Shivaya, Shivaya Namah, Namah Shivaya. So you had all this going on. So for me, it was like I was soaking into it. And it was part and parcel of my upbringing. And then at some point, I started having special lessons with Manikanan sir, which is where some of the very classic songs of those days, which were very popular. Which you sang the other night. These type of songs. And so I was learning all of this. A lot of emphasis was on the Tamil songs because that is what Manikanam sir used to sing and the Tevaram, Tilvashagam. And in those days, Sivakari Gondarajan, TM Saundarajan were the playback singers. And so there was a lot of this. Ganabadi and Gaida. You know, the morning started with Silkari Govindarajan. Hmm? So, this was part and parcel of the culture. And so, Manikanan sir started teaching me. And this was going on and I was learning all these songs and didn't realize that we had a great visitor to the ashram on many occasions. A very dear friend of Swamiji, this small little old man would come. Uh, he, he looked like a sparrow actually, so small, tiny man, amazing man. And Swamiji used to say this man is 100 years old. And uh, that man used to speak of stories and all, and I never realized. And then they said, this is a person called Swami Shuddhananda Bharati. And later on, I came to know he is one of our greatest Tamil lyricists and music composers. And Swami Suddhananda Bharati, on so many occasions, I had his blessing. And I remember when I came to know who he was, and he was visiting Pondicherry, I organized to have a concert where I sang only his compositions. And, uh, these type of songs were his songs. And I was blessed that he was the chief guest for my Nudanga Marangetram. And this morning I saw a beautiful photo that brought tears to my eyes of him knocking me on the head while blessing me at the Aragetram. So the influence of Manikanan sir at the very base of my musical journey with emphasis on simplified Tamil songs. This was like the base that was then. So from the age of around seven or eight, I was singing on stage. And I started 
performing. Whenever we had an ashram event, I would sing a couple of songs and we would have the uh, tabla and the harmonium. We had, uh, in those days, I remember Jagadishan sir used to play Nurdangam for me. Uh, Neveli Lalita Akka used to play violin. And uh, what happened was that this was so much part of me. I was on stage. I remember being on stage and always singing. And so many, even Swamiji organized in the 1980s, cultural, uh, summer cultural festivals. And we had music, dance. I'd come to Swami Madam on the uh, stage, the, the mandala under the tree where the Ganesha and Ganeshini statues are there. So this was very much part of my upbringing. And then I must have been maybe nine or maybe even 10 when it was decided I should get more interested and trained in the Pakka Karnatic music. So up to that time, I was learning all the Swara Varisegal, uh, Tata Varisay, all that was going on, Chanda Varisay and all. But it was more the emphasis on what I would call light classical and Tamil Bhakti based. And then I was taken to Sri Rangam Ranganathan sir, uh, to me one of the Nada yogis. I consider Ranganathan sir to be a Nada yogi. And with him I started training. And I tell you, you cannot find a guru like him, a Sangeeta guru like Ranganathan sir, who used to write down, and for the first time he used to write down, the swara notations and then the words. And this is where you start to realize how each phrase has a certain notation. Till then it was just Manikanam sir would sing and I would listen and sing it. And here I started to get this feeling of what is this notation, what is the composition. Started learning the compositions of Saint Tyagaraja, Muttu Swami Dikshita, Shama Sastrigal, Swati Thirunal, all these great composers, we started learning the compositions. And that is where then I started to understand the power of creative music. And uh, Ranganathan sir uh, brought into me that deep interest in uh, creative music, which is Swaratrasthara or Manodharma Sangeeta. And I still remember, I think the first composition for which we started singing uh, Swaras was the Mohana. Kirtana of Muthu Swami Deshita. Gopega mano gam bajegam govardhanam giridharam suravaram uragaram gopega mano gam and he started giving me this opportunity where the creativity of music came. So I would say that the foundation, pre-foundation was laid by all the bhajans being sung by the people in the ashram. The foundation by Puduvai Kalimamani Manikanan sir. And then I would say that the actual edifice was built by uh, Sri Rangam Ranganathan sir. Okay, that was <laughs> a lot of insights and we got a lot of, you know, <laughs> small, small bits of different bhajans and nice songs. So moving on to the second question. I personally just adore your music. You have a beautiful gift of singing your own compositions while playing the Mridangam or Natuangam. In addition, you add your own swaras like in Anukula Ganapati, it's Sagamapani Anukula Ganapati. I listened and followed your version on that, especially that song Anukula Ganapati. And I remember I sat down and <laughs> I was hearing and writing down all the swaras. Uh, so back to the question. But the special mention is that you compose and sing those lovely swaras on the spot, which is just amazing and hard to believe. How did you make this, which is impossible for most, possible? Well, I think, you know, this journey of learning with Ranganathan sir is where that came. But before that, when I was learning with Manikanan sir, we would have the swara, but we would write it down. So, Karuna layanidhi dinamun Charanambu jangadiye Karuna layanidhi Sagamadani karuna layanidhi 
सग सग जणी दणी जणी जणी दम दणी दणी दम ग सग म दणी सरुण With Ranganathan sir, he said, "See, this is where you get a chance to express your creativity. What is flowing through you at that moment?" And this actually is something that really became very deep for me, which is why I love T V Shankar Nayanam sir, Sangeeta Kalanidhi, T V S sir's music because the katpana that is there, the imagination, the creativity is so amazingly spontaneous that I just love his music because of that. but i must say here you know what happened though i was learning all of this i was singing on stage i remember i gave my debut performance i must have been 11 when i gave my debut performance at the town hall mary hall which is now demolished and they are rebuilding on the beach road and um, i gave a concert um, at the mary hall i remember that day and uh, so i was i was singing on stage i was playing on stage i was doing that but i had no idea what i was really doing in the sense of it was more you know a monkey has been taught to dance and a parrot has been taught to sing and i was in school and i remember what happened was i was listening to lot of film music i was in my 9th and 10th standard in kodaikanal bounds gandhi vidyashram along with shiva kumar and you know all my friends there uh, what i used to do was listen to this and then there was a point where i started listening to kj yesudas and i very much attribute my um understanding a new understanding that came into my music about what i was doing to kj yesudas because he bridged that light music with the carnatic classical and amazing amazing voice amazing singing and he actually i remember what i used to do when i used to come home for the holidays and then 91 92 and all that I used to buy every cassette tape uh, that was available from his Tarangini music, and it used to be live. So he would sing concerts, and they would put it on a cassette and audio. You put it in and listen. And then I started listening to Bala Murli Krishna, and Bala Murli Krishna is the creative genius. Then it slowly shifted to Shankar Narayanan sir. So I would say K J Yesudas was an amazing human being. he gave me that bridge to understand what i was doing i was already doing it i had the raw material he enabled me to know what i was doing listening to bala murli krishna and seeing the amazing creativity that was there in his compositions and all and then suddenly when i heard shankar narayan sir i said that is what i want to be that is how i want the music to flow through me and till this day i am blessed to be He is a manasika. He is my manasika Sangeeta Guru, and I am a manasika Shishya. And whenever he says Ananda is my Shishya, I, I have a lot of endorphins and encaphalins and feel good hormones. And with Shankar Narayan sir, any song he would take, there would be katpana swaras. And uh, I was talking to him once about this. I said, sir, where is this all this amazing imagination coming from? Because I, I saw him tapping into something. The real Nada he was tapping into. and he said you know ananda i even have critics and a critic told him that his spontaneity was mechanical now spontaneity is on the spot that they actually accused him of having mechanical spontaneity that he was always spontaneous i said that's just an amazing state of being where you that the music is just flowing it is it is in shankar narayan sir's concert i would say maybe 25 30% of the concert is pre uh, prepared music in the sense of the compositions of the different composers the rest of it 60 to 70% at least is his raga singing the swara singing the thanam singing the nerval singing and the nerval singing is another place where you take a line and you start developing it i still remember the nerval we first did with ranganathan sir was for uh, a very beautiful kirtana swati tirunal in mayamal of gaula where we have deva deva kalayami te charanam buja sevanam deva deva kalayami 
ಜಯಣ ಭುಜ ಸೇವಣೋ ದೇವ ದೇವ ಕಲೆಯ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ದಶರಣ ಜಗ ರೂಪ ನಿಪಚಿಲ್ಲ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಜಗ ರೂಪ ನಿಪಚಿಲ ಜನ್ಮ ಜಿತ ಮಿಲ ಜಗ ರೂಪ ನಿಪಚಿಲ ಜನ್ಮ ಜಿತ ಮಮಕಿಲ ಜಗ ರೂಪ ನಿಪಚಿಲ ಜನ್ all of this is on the spot you take that line how do you develop and it is a beautiful challenge because you are being challenged how can you take that line how can you develop it within the framework of the maya mala gaula ragam the rubaga tala thalam so rubaga thalam maya mala gaula these are the words with that constraint what can you develop and then how the swaras come jata rupa tava magama jata rupa ಧನಿಸಣಿ ದಬದ ದಬ ಮಜತ ರೂಪ ಮಬದ ಬಬ ಮಬದ ದಬ ಮಬದ ಬ ಮಾಬದಣಿ ದಬ ಮಗ ಮಜತ ರೂಪ ಮಬದ ಮಾಬದಣಿ ಸಣಿ ದಬ ದಣಿ ಸವಿ ಸಣಿ ಸ ನಿಗಮ ಸಣಿ ಸಣಿ ದಬ ದಣಿ ಸವಿ ಗಣಿ ಸಿ ಸಣಿ 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 ದಬ ದಬ ಮಗ ನಿಗಮ ಜತ ರೂಪ ಅಂಡ್ ದಿ the feel good hormones i would say the endorphins the encephalins that come when you have come to that exact spot takajata rupa davamaga risagama jata rupa pada pada bama bada davamaga jata rupa dada pada pada bama bada davama pada ni sari sani re sa ri sani dani dan sani da pada ma pa when you come to that that is that feel good uh, experience that comes and you lose yourself i think one of the things that happens is you lose yourself and in losing that lower part of you a higher part of you can manifest and i, I tell you that is just so addictive it is a beautiful addiction where you you are elevated to another level of consciousness and this framework that was given by manikanan sir framework that was given by raganathan sir the inspiration of kj yesudas balamuli krishna and of course sanya shankaran sir without him i don't think that creativity would have really blossomed just listening to him understanding what is going on and a major issue here is because of my mrudangam training which we'll talk about next week the mrudangam training has given me that rhythm and the bharatanatyam which has that rhythm the bhava so because of the music the rhythm and the bhava all being there for me it became a very organic experience where you are completely expressing yourself through the music and i think this is what then carried into when i started composing my own songs writing my own lyrics because what i found is my deep love for tamil uh i was able to express it i was expressing something which was deep something which was very deep in me i could express in words and then i could sing it there's a very beautiful song which i used to sing and so many songs that i forgotten how many they are there that is there but there's a very beautiful one and many of them came on my tours with devasena and as i always say devasena has really played an important role there because i i would do it and i would forget about it and she would say you better write it down and so many songs i still remember one rama tillana we were driving to a function by the time we drove there and came back we had this tillana and next day i didn't remember even a single bit of it because it's all on the spot uh, and for me it was it was finished i had that i had the high experience of it i didn't need to hold on to it there is no holding on to it it was done so she kept on saying write it down or she would write it down or you know record it on your mobile or something and for me most of my compositions came while i was uh, traveling and i still I still remember you know we were uh, 
there was one point and I had done something and we were going to school. You were still in Trinos and you and your brother with, with me. And uh, you said something like, you have composed a song for party uh, or something like that and all, but why not a song for me? And uh, I don't know what it was, but it started off with that. and then that love for the Tirukkural. Gunamum kutramum unatum tirukkuralai. Gunamum kutramum unatum tirukkuralai. Kannatil muttamittu kolum thaye. Gunamum nadi kutramum nadi. Avatul megai nadi mekka kolal alagum niye. You know, these type of thoughts started to get expressed. And similarly, I think there was one more composition that came. <laughs> that was that uh, uh, for uh, Devi. It was that uh, where we talk about the Tandava Madum Fishakti Kali Udantil Vila Yadalse Adana Vishwani. That was one. That got uh, motivated actually by uh, watching my dear uh, Atmananda dance in Italy. She did a beautiful uh, dance on Adana Vishwara. And watching her dance sort of brought out that creative part, and this song came at that time, Adana Vishwara. So, what happens is that the composition, composing gave me an outlet to express. And this is why most all my compositions are in Tamil because for me it's a language in which I emote, I feel in Tamil. So for me, Tamil is the expression because I think one of the inspirations for a lot of this comes from uh, Mahakavi Bharatiya. And he has a beautiful song which he sings and for me it's, it's, it's the one I have written in my office in city center also. And I set it to Atana. Atana is a very strong raga which is uh, like sort of in your face type of raga. So I said, Virvenendrini mm -hmm. Vedicay money than a polar vein on whom we'll be entering in a tayom. We'll be entering in a tayom. Vedicay money than a polar vein on whom we'll be entering in a tayom. There is all the need of thin trip. Palachin and chilka they can pay. There is all the need of thin trip. Palachin and chilka they can pay. Manumbadi Tunba Vega wouldn't be a word of Palasail to say the Narai Kodi Kirapalva made the Kodum Kotuki and a pin my um Palabe, take a money than a polabe, Palabe, take a money than a polabe, Nanum Virvin and Denin a Tayo. Such beautiful expression. He, Baldia, is challenging even fate. Do you think I'm a joker like all these people? Or just running around for food and constantly criticizing others, suffering and making others suffer, becoming old and becoming uh, feed for time. Do you think I'm like this? I am not like that. Imagine that heart that Bharatiya had. This is what has motivated me. And then, of course, I think what happened was uh, I was singing and then I was playing the Madangam, and at some point, I think it was your mother, she said, uh, why don't you try to do both? And again, Ammaji also. I would say Ammaji had that uh, desire because Ammaji always wanted something to be different. So I would say both Ammaji as well as your mother, they sort of motivated me and then as we started traveling abroad, 
Well, especially to Italy, my second home in the Gitananda Ashram, Priyananda has all those mudangams. So playing the mudangam and singing, which is a bit difficult because what happens is when you are playing, you your your pattern of thinking is very different. When you are singing, your pattern of uh, thinking is different. So there are two different patterns of thinking going on, and you have to do it. But then when you do the natu angam, it's the same type of thing because you have to sing. and you have to be playing the rhythm so the singing may be going at a certain pattern and the rhythmic structure is creating micro uh, bits of rhythmic patterns within that bigger picture and this is why you have to be singing you have to be doing the natuvanga so i think that also helped me a lot with this so for me it became natural uh, it is still tough uh, i i won't say it's easy for me i think doing the natuvanga is much easier for singing then to play the mudangam because um you know sort of again you have this your hands are spread out and there's there's a different type of energy happening there and with the natuvangam you always have the support of other people playing the mudangam and the other instruments but when you're playing the mudangam you don't really have that you are the support so to sing and play and then to again have this uh, creativity go on i think it's a very good challenge and it it's it's is this thing that you are trying to make the best of every bit of the blessing you have been given in life because if you don't realize how blessed you are if you don't realize your good fortune and if you don't use it properly you are going to lose it as swami ji often said he said if you don't use something you are going to lose it so i think i have been given the opportunity to use it and uh, a great 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 sense of ease comes uh, from my singing in fact i i feel that my singing is a uh, very good catharsis for me i seen it with you also whenever you upset you just go and sit and start singing and then you feel better you feel better because you have sort of you know you have cleared the cobwebs of all the negativities that are holding you back so uh, and you know, music is for, for me music is meditation that's that's what i would say music is meditation for me okay so before we conclude I request you to please sing any one of your compositions along with some of the on the spot swaras. <laughs> just I think it would be a good gift for people who are watching it and just to see it, you know, live. <laughs> just so many of these compositions that. Maybe just a short one, just something that would fit to this ending. On. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I think. Uh, for me it's it's one of the compositions especially that I've just been mentioning them as we have gone on <laughs> yesterday was shani mahapradosham so shiva's energy is still there there's a lot of shakti yesterday in class i was talking about the energy of durga ஜோதிஷ்வரணே ஆடும் தெய்வம் அருட்பு ஜோதி ஆடும் தெய்வம் adum devam arutpu jodi edana eeshwarane adum devam arutpu jodi edana eeshwarane tayum niye tandayum niye எங்கள் தலை வணும் நீயே தாயும் நீயே தந்தையும் நீயே தந்தைகள் இல்லா எங்கள் தலை வணும் நீயே தாயும் நீயே தந்தையும் நீயே தந்தைகள் இல்லா எங்கள் தலை வணும் நீயே 
தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நாவினில் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நாவினில் உதிக்கவே துய் கால ஞானியாய் விளங்கிட செய்வாயே துய் கால ஞானியாய் விளங்கிட செய்வாயே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நாவினில் உதிக்கவே நாமலி What I will do is that Aldana Vishwara Dadana Mavande Swaram Bharo. We'll sing Swaras. But just like that. Tittikum Tamil say. Tittikum Tamil say Nabi Nilu Dikave. Tittikum Tamil say. Tittikum Tamil say. தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நவினில் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நவினில் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நவினில் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை 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 நவினில் தித்திக்கும்தனி தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசையே நிசவிசணி தமதனி தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசையே விகவிசணி தனி தனி தமதனி சரி தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசையே கம கம கரி சனி சரி கரி சனி தமதனி சரி சனி தனி சனி தனி சாணி தமதனி சனி தமதனி தனி தமக மதனி சாசாசம் கமதனி சாசாசம் கமதனி தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் சனி சரி சனி சரி சனி சரி சனி சரி சரி சனி சரி சனி 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 சரி சனி சரி சனி <laughs> சனி தனி சனி தமகதனி தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நாவினில் உதிக்கவே தித்திக்கும் தமிழ் இசை நாவினில் உதிக்கவே துய் கால ஞானியாய் விளங்கிட செய்வாயே துய் கால ஞானியாய் விளங்கிட செய்வாயே ஆடும் தெய்வமம் அருட்பெறும் ஜோதியே ஈஸ்வரணேம் ஈஸ்வரணேம் And this is how, you know, just on the spot you think, okay, let me do it. Instead of singing for Ardhanari, you sing at Tittikkum Tamil Say. So you find a different. Tayyum niye sani nidada mamagatayyum niye கமதம கமகே சமதாயும் திஸ் இஸ் வேர் ஆன் த ஸ்பாட் யூ ஆர் திங்கிங் அபவுட் இட் யூ ஆர் டெவலப்பிங் இட் அண்ட் ஐ டெல் யூ தி த த்ரில் இட்ஸ் 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 எ த்ரில் தட் கம்ஸ் வென் யூ ஆர் எக்ஸ்ப்ளோரிங் திஸ் பியூட்டிஃபுல் மியூசிக் ஆஸ் ரங்கநாத் திஸ் ஐ யூஸ் டு டெல் மீ ஹி சட் ஏச் ராக இஸ் எ தேவதா இட்ஸ் எ டிவைன் என்டிட்டி and you are describing that entity what does that entity look like what is it dressed what are the ornaments what are the colors and that is the description that your music should bring it is not just a tune is not just a melody it is a description of divinity itself when you are singing and that is why the 
Music is definitely a food for the gods. No doubt about it. Well, thank you again. It was really lovely and uh, <laughs> hope you all enjoyed this episode. And just to inform you beforehand, next week we will be having the episode 14 of season 2. But on the journey of Nidangam. And you see we are learning so much in the season 2 especially. Like uh, season 1, it was more like, you know, getting the I was receiving questions from the audience. And based on the questions, I would create a topic. But in season 2, I think like each season should have its own uh, specific speciality. <laughs> so... Actually, uh, Soundar Rajan is asking a question. Uh, when playing cricket, what type of song Dr. Sel was singing? Uh, I, I don't remember really singing when I was playing cricket because for me, my full attention was on the cricket at that time. But uh, I remember that there, there were a lot of beautiful moments in cricket. But uh, I don't think I was singing, you know, of course, Krishnamacharya Shrikanth. When he used to be batting, he would be whistling and singing uh, and that really upset the opposition players. I don't think I used to sing when I was playing uh, cricket because cricket itself was my full focus. But uh, for me, I think when I uh, have been driving a lot, like when I'm driving on my bike, I used to sing a lot. Not so much in the car, but often I think on the bike, I used to have when the wind comes in your face and there's a very beautiful sense of singing and I still remember singing a song. We, we had a dance practice at the city center for an annual day or something. And I was singing some song in my head and I drove, uh, it was around midnight, uh, in a dark street in Pondicherry, I drove right into a dark black buffalo and had an accident where I got injured in my shoulder. So uh, that is there. And I remember many times people used to tell me, uh, Dr. Ramanda, we saw you last night on, uh, you know, near Auroville. And I'm like, how did you see me? They said, we didn't really see you. We heard you singing as you were going on the bike. So, you know, someone going on the bike and singing, most probably it was Dr. Ananda. So yes, uh, music has been a very important part. And when I'm in Italy uh, with Priyananda and he's driving me around, uh, we, we, we go on long concerts, uh, non-stop singing. We get into the car, with Triyananda and the on switch and as we leave Gitananda Ashram, we start a song until we reach whether it is Rome or whether it is Milan or wherever we are driving that day, keep singing. So I think the music and movement, the movement and music are actually very, very much, they go together for me a lot. It's a really, really quite an amazing sight. Okay, so... Back to all of you for next week, for the next episode, we are going to have the journey of the Mridangam of how Dr. Sir, you know, got into Mridangam and, you know, till now he's playing a lot. And uh, just to <laughs> tell you beforehand, if you have any questions, you can send it to me. Or maybe while watching, suddenly something pops up and we'll see if we can get it to you because it's a little hard on the live. But uh, whatever, we will answer it in the upcoming, if not on that particular session. And just to keep you all updated, the events happening every week, uh, we have wonderful Wednesdays with uh, Yoga Charmi Devasena Miss, where she goes through her insights and the bhajans, which are quite nice. And you can refer to the timings because we have been doing it in the past weeks. And you have the Twinkling Thursdays with me and Dr. Sun. We present a musical session of two or three songs, uh, well, sometimes four. And uh, I try to sing some famous songs also because many people, you know, they like some famous songs because, you know, singing my father's compositions are always my favorite, but still, you know, the famous compositions many people might like and in different languages, I'll try to work on that. And we have scintillating Saturdays with Dr. Sir in the morning and we have an online yoga session. So these all are available on Facebook and then later on YouTube. But in addition, the Mantra Yoga Sadhana is going on every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. And if you want, you can register and join. This tour over, you can listen to the recordings. We have 10 more to go. And it's actually such a good experience. And <laughs> many people are having a lot of fun being guinea pigs. People on that know it. So you have a <laughs> chance to chant there. And it's really nice. And we'll be learning a lot of... Uh, scriptures and we are learning the mantras which are really produced 
such a vibration especially in this time it makes us feel better so <laughs> we might have gone a little long but i think it was worth it and thank you to every one of you who's there now and who will be watching later thank you and your comments really mean a lot and thank you for being you i just wanted to thank you all for your support for all our online activities and i just also wanted to say that you know my own musical journey has been there but i think the greatest happiness for me is when i see and hear divya singing because through her i am finding a refinement of it because you may or may not believe it but i don't like my own voice and i don't like my own singing too much so you know for me i i do it and i know there are people who like it and so you know fine i i know i know the feeling but it's is one of those very odd situations but when i listen to her i am transported to another loka and i think uh, divya has been blessed with the best of the music from all our sides from swamiji from amma ji from deva sena from myself and right from her conception has been in the music so i think it is very beautiful that uh, i can listen to her and through her i can also enjoy what others are enjoying in my music i can enjoy through her music so thank you everyone for being with us keep your support coming keep your love coming keep sharing because sharing is caring and when you care you share so keep sharing have a wonderful time